Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video we're going to react to 10 crazy things an Irish girl got wrong about America before going. This should be fun because be I, I, you know, I've been to America a few times, uh, went last year and, you know, most uh, people from the UK, from Europe, from anywhere that's not America that go, usually have these preconceptions, these these preconceived ideas about how the people are going to be, you know, things they're going to see, etc. Like, you know, I don't know why, but I thought that, you know, when I go there, I was going to see like pew pews everywhere. Like, I just assumed that I was, it was, I thought it was almost going to be like the Wild West. I was going to look around and see people like, you know, walking like that, you know, with holsters, you know, with a massive, you know, pistol. And it wasn't like that at all in any of the places that I've been in America. And I've been to you know, a few different states now. So that was a big one that I got wrong. So it's going to be interesting to see if uh, I share some of her opinions and uh, her insights. So when I was going through my list of video ideas for the week and deciding what to do, I came across this one. And apparently I've just been scrolling past it on a weekly basis because it's such an obvious video for me to do on this channel. I can't believe I haven't done it already. Whenever you decide to visit somewhere new as a person, <laughs> You definitely go in with some of your assumptions and things that you've heard about a place. And you could definitely call those prejudices yes, and biases. And when I went to America for the first time, I definitely brought a lot of that with me because as I've said it before, happens. in Ireland, we grow up watching people on the TV and film. And a lot of our pop culture comes from America. So we think um, we know same, about America until we go there. Today, I thought it would be fun if we looked at a couple of things that I presumed before I went there that turned out to be wrong. So wrong. This video is gonna kind of sum up a lot of things I've said before, but I haven't collectively put them all together in one cohesive list. I hope it's cohesive. As always, this is a list, it's full of generalizations. I'm not specifically talking about you as an individual, Chad. Yeah, Chad's <laughs> now gonna be the collective term for all of those commenters. Before we get into the list, be sure to subscribe. Otherwise, the next time you go to eat your favorite food, you're gonna be like, I don't like this anymore. And that's a little heartbreaking. And on with the list. Coming in at number 10, it was thinking of America as a country when it's kind of more like a continent. Before I yeah, went to America, I definitely approached it the way I would going to France or Italy or Spain for the first time. I was thinking of it as a collective culture and that everybody was kind of similar and that the climate yeah, would yeah. be similar. Even though I knew on an intellectual level everywhere was different, I sort of hadn't put together the fact that each state was like a little country. Don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. there are definitely common traits among American people For and sure. American lifestyles, but there are For also sure. huge differences as well. Culturally and climate wise, you can get totally different places right next to each other. Yeah. And the people have totally different approaches to life as well. For example, in LA, people in shops kiss your ass because they work on commission, whereas in New York, they're really rude to you <sighs> because they're in New York. People are overall just very different in each state, though they- Yeah, she's not wrong. Like, you know, New York, we did four days in New York and it was super fast, very similar to London, very similar. Probably like London on steroids in a way, in terms of the skyscrapers and the weather, very, very similar to London. And then when we went to San Francisco, it was just completely different, way more chilled out. You know, the sun was shining. You could like, you know, we went to the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge. The vibe was just so different. It, it's just crazy the, the vibe difference between New York and LA, for example. Massive, massive. To share common and San Francisco. So yeah, going in, I definitely think if it's your first time going there, think of each state like a country as opposed to a county, if that makes sense. Coming in at number nine, it's thinking that because you're from a Western country and America is a Western country, that you'll have everything in common, whereas you just won't. Mm. Americans have very different approaches to Irish people, for example, to things. Mm. I think a good way to describe it is it's just a different rhythm there. A general sense of yeah. humor with American people can be different, although individuals will click with each other on an individual level as things tend to go. I like you. You're funny and you're nicely shaped. There's definitely a lot more sensitivities in America, so you have to be a bit more careful about what you say and who you say it to. And at the same time, you also have to be really direct, which sounds like a contradiction in itself, but hear me out. 
American people in general tend to just be very direct with each other, they'll say what they're thinking, whereas Irish people sort of beat around the bush and we're all kind of tuned into that. Because in America, people are just straight up with each other. Subtlety is not such a big thing there. So in the same way, when you make a joke, for example, people can sometimes mm. take it at surface level, like what you say is what you mean, whereas you're just kind of making a joke. So you need to bear in mind that people think that way there. The next thing, and I'm gonna to touch on this. I'm trying to think, like, are Americans more direct? Oh, man. You know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe slightly more. Maybe slightly more, but you know, the people that I've come across in life in general, hmm, I actually don't know if there's that much of a difference. I, I think the level of directness is quite similar, you know, t to, to what I've seen in, in the UK, like, especially in Europe, in Europe, people are even more direct. It's like next level. <laughs> like, so yeah, I wouldn't say Americans are that much more direct than, than Europeans. I, I wouldn't say so getting into it too much if possible is that guns affect the culture so before i went to america i was aware that gun culture was a thing and that they have guns whereas coming from ireland i'd never really seen a gun before a lot of people pointed out that the troubles were in ireland and i should have seen a gun but i didn't grow up around the troubles and also some people questioned about our police force most of our police force do not have guns only the special forces have guns so, and honestly so, i haven't been in a situation police. where i've had to be around the special forces much in my life I haven't robbed too many banks that you know of. So yeah, the first time I ever saw a gun was when I went to America. And people in America are hugely passionate <coughs> about how they feel about guns, whether they're pro or against. There doesn't seem to really be any middle ground. So my advice, if you are going to America, try not to get into a gun debate with anyone, irrespective of how they feel, because I definitely feel like I would need to be a bit more informed about the whole thing before I got into a deep conversation about it. I remember people saying that my Black Friday in Texas was so chill because people are very polite in Texas because they're all afraid of getting shot by each other's guns. <laughs> now, I don't know that really? think that's the case, but I do think the, the knowledge that there are guns out there affects how people are. Damn. Not saying if that's good or bad, just saying it surprised me. I was on the fence about this. The next thing I got wrong about America it's a shame, like, we went to a gun range, couldn't, couldn't, you know, actually do anything there because of, uh, they didn't have any, because we'd never used a, a weapon before, they didn't have anyone there to train us, but yeah, like, I have held a gun before, it was in Nigeria, I was at my cousin's wedding, and one of the guests was, like, the, um, the police chief of, of the area that we were in, where the wedding was held, and he was absolutely wasted. He asked me if I've ever, ever held one before. I said no. And he just pulled it out and dropped it in my lap. I was just like, dude, what are you doing? I held it. It was it was much heavier than I imagined it would be. We're talking like a, it was like a normal pistol looking thing. It was, it had to have weighed, if I had to put a number on it, maybe a couple pounds like a, a kilo it probably weighed about a kilogram yeah that's that's the one thing i can remember it was much heavier than i thought it would be i went there was how to tip so in ireland you tip 10 percent on a bill and you tend to tip if you've had a really nice dinner or something but not so much if you go to a diner and not so much if you get your nails done unless you really want to tipping in ireland is if somebody did a really good job you leave a 10 percent tip when I've gone to other countries in Europe, it actually tends to be even less than 10%. You'll just leave a couple of coins or whatever you have in your pocket. In America, the standard tip on everything is 20%, and this blew my mind. I did not realize that you have to tip for everything in America. And you guys have given me some really good advice on how to tip and stuff like that, which has been much appreciated in my travels. I understand that tipping comes from people's minimum wage not being enough to sustain themselves and that's why you guys tip. I've definitely gotten more used to it but it does kind of blow my mind the whole tipping culture and when I get back to Ireland I'm still in this weird tipping mentality and I find myself tipping everyone and in Ireland people are like oh thanks. Nobody is going to turn down your 20% tip in Ireland but it is unusual. I also did not realize people are nice to you for tips in America. When this dawned upon me it kind of broke my heart a bit I'm not gonna lie. I just thought all the waiters and waitresses were really nice in America, but they just want my money. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing I really underestimate. I'm not going to say anything more about tipping. I've, I've already said it, you know, it's yeah, it's very different here. 
Very before different. I went to America was how extreme things get there. Because there are so many people, you have like some major extremes going on in your country and it's easy for people to overlook things because there are just so many people. The first time I went to America, I was really surprised by the weight thing. 34% of American adults, 17% of our children are considered obese. I also wow. was kind of blown away by the homeless population. Nearly 700,000 yeah. Americans experience homelessness on any given night in the country. Also on extreme yeah. things, people tend to be super extra over there. What the? When I'm in a room full of American people, I definitely sometimes feel like a bit of a wallflower because there's just so many people with such big personalities. But I guess the quieter people like me would also feel like they are fading into the background a little. We're just quieter about it. The next thing I got wrong was thinking that where I went was not super relevant. Yes, I'm touching back on that time I went into Compton. I've said to you guys before that in Ireland, wow, there she went really Compton. these kind of super unsafe. But is Compton, you know, like we've all heard straight out of Compton, you know, by NWA and stuff like that. Is it still that bad or has it been gentrified? We didn't have time to go, um, but I imagine it's probably been gentrified because it's not, it's, it's in LA. Like there's so much demand for LA property. It, it, it seems like it's a prime target for like gentrification. Places to go, you can go pretty much anywhere once you keep your wits about you. But in America, there are definitely places that people are very surprised that you would go to. When visiting America, you need to drive and you need to plan out where you're going a lot more than I did the first time I went there. You can't just wander around America as I mistakenly thought the first time I went there. Who knew? You shouldn't be here. The next thing I did not realize before I went to America was how much national pride there is. And yeah, I actually think this, this is a, a really big one. Thing. Flags Americans put everywhere. Flags everywhere on yep. everything and they can quote the constitution to you if you pay man when we got to jfk like uh, new york there was this absolutely massive flag on the ceiling um, it covered the whole ceiling i've never seen a flag that big ever in my life it must have been the size of you know those i'm trying to think of how to visualize this like imagine a football field and the entire field, there's a flag that can cover all of the grass. It was that big. It was huge, huge. A million dollars. I could not tell you one thing from the Irish constitution. When the anthem is played in America, people cry. In Ireland, people barely know the words to the anthem. I mean, we never really tried before. And for the most part, American people are just really proud of their country but they also have a lot of negative things to say about it. And that is freedom of speech. The next thing I did not realize <laughs> before I went to America is the abundance of fast food that you can have there. Yeah. In Ireland, there's maybe a dozen big fast food chains. In America, there are hundreds and they are literally everywhere. Fast food for a lot of people in America is a way of life and I didn't really realize that so much. I think the convenience of it and stuff makes it that way for people. It's quick, it's easy, it's literally everywhere. Also fast food is really delicious and addictive so the people who don't eat fast food are kind of more the exception than people who eat fast food at least once a week. If I lived there I would eat fast food pretty much every single day. Yeah the fast food the portions of bigger for sure much bigger and there's way more options like mexican for example there's just way more options for mexican food like way way more we are getting more we really want i want chick-fil-a here i don't know why chick-fil-a haven't branched out into europe they would be so successful the thing i did not realize like, before i went to america on? is how much people want to put you in a category when you get there people want to know your belief system right out the gate i think because america is so big people trying to find their own communities and people who agree with them on certain things and have the same outlook as them there's a desire for a sense of belonging and i think that can be a good thing and it can be a negative thing people will outright ask what your political system is what your ethnicity is and stuff like that what are you from the perspective of an outsider it definitely seems to me like people want to belong to certain groups 
feel free to discuss that one in the comments in a respectful way. It's just something I observed. And the number one thing I underestimated before I went to America was how big the American dream is and the infinite possibilities that you have in America. When I went to America for the first time, I was taken aback at how huge the possibilities are. And I hadn't really realized in Ireland the limitations that we have. There's kind of only so far that you can go, only so successful that you can be in a small country like Ireland. In America, no matter what you want to be, you can be that and a million times more. And that's the American dream. And people go yeah. there in pursuit of the- People definitely, I think in America, like to be honest, it's, it's here as well now. Younger people definitely are more um, aspirational when it comes to like, you know, social mobility, things like that, wealth uh, generation, definitely. I think kind of have to be if you want to buy a house. But yeah, America, the American dream, wanting to, you know, strive for more. It's definitely really like woven into the culture. For sure. American dream, Definitely. and some people get it, and some people don't. But there's something really nice about the possibilities being kind of endless there. Not only can you be rich, you can be crazy rich. <laughs> Not only can you be famous, you can be crazy famous. And there's loads of people who are doing that. I was only reading this week how the highest paid presenter in Ireland gets 500,000 euro a year, which obviously is a lot it's of still money. still a lot of money. But when you compare it to the America, American wages, yeah. Jesus 20 million Christ. or whatever. It's definitely yeah. something I would imagine if I lived in America, I would kind of take for granted. But basically the possibilities are out there and you can go out and you can take them. So, you know, it's only Monday. Go do that this week. And that's it for today's list. Feel free to engage with mm. one another in the comments. Great video. Like really like hit the nail on the head in a lot of ways. Um, massive, massive similarities between the UK and the USA, but there's definitely a lot of subtle differences as well that once you spend a decent amount of time there you you do you do observe for sure um which is cool i think the big one is that you know america is really sort of like continental in in a way like it's uh you know i've only been to what florida new york san francisco california maryland so i've been to five states it's not not a lot i don't have a huge sample size but uh seattle six but there is di there are definitely big differences like culturally between states. Obviously, the language is the same, the currency is the same, but the ways of life, the weather, you know, even the food in a lot of ways, differences between. So, and especially the size of America as well. Like it definitely is kind of like a continent. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.